Hey everybody, Aaron Bishop here with another Bishop's Blurb. In the last video, I introduced the topic of honor and shame cultures in the world, especially as we see them represented in the Bible. And I made the claim that viewing the Bible primarily through a guilt and innocence mindset, it can cause us to fall into a trap that the Bible might be warning us about. A great example of this comes from the odd little story of Noah in Genesis 9. Genesis 9, 20 through 21. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and he became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. After the flood recedes, Noah plants a vineyard, and he turns some of the produce into wine. After imbibing too much, which frankly is an understandable state of affairs after what he had just went through, he ends up in his tent naked. Now, in the ancient world, public nudity or being seen by someone naked was inherently shameful. We catch sight of this all the way back in Genesis chapters 2 and 3. Genesis 2 verse 25, And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. Before the tree there was no shame in nudity, but then once they ate of the tree. Genesis 3 7, And then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves loincloths. First response of Adam and Eve after eating of the fruit was to recognize shame in their own nudity and then to attempt to cover up and escape that shame by covering it. So when we return to the story of Noah just a few chapters later, Noah is supposed to be in this safe space. His tent is supposed to be this safe space where he can get naked and nobody will see him, nobody will judge him, nobody will shame him because of his nakedness while in his tent. Unfortunately for Noah, he was drunk and he passed out. One of his sons entered the tent and witnessed their father's shame. Genesis 9, 22 through 23. And Ham, the father of Canaan, he saw the nakedness of his father, and he told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth, they took a garment, laid it on both of their shoulders, and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Ham saw Noah's shame, and he didn't hide it, he didn't conceal it. Instead, he shared it. And when we finish the story, we find that because of this, Noah curses Canaan, Ham's oldest son. Now, there's been a lot of speculation as to just what does it mean to be naked in the tent? It has to be something egregious, right? In order for this curse to come down on Canaan, his son? Is it literal? Is it metaphorical? Is it euphemistic? There is no end of ideas of just how to interpret Noah's nakedness. And this is the trap of the guilt and innocence mindset. We think Ham must have done something wrong. There must be some guilt in order to have this sort of curse be placed upon him. And it must have been something rather egregious for a curse to be the result of this. He has to be guilty of something. And that's the trap. In attempting to discover just what happened inside the tent, what was so terrible that it would result in a curse, to discover what Ham was guilty of, we are attempting, like Ham, to witness the shame. Noah. We want to enter Noah's tent like Ham did. And like Ham, we then want to tell others about Noah's shame. We want to say we figured it out. Noah's shame was this. We want everyone to know because in doing so, by revealing the shame of Noah, we often increase our own honor in the eyes of those who look upon us and hear what we have to say as they elevate us for our knowledge. And when we do this, we become Ham. This man who was cursed for what he did. Now there is an aspect of guilt in this story. Not in witnessing Noah's shame, not in going into the tent, but in sharing Noah's shame. Ham told his brothers. He spread Noah's shame. Instead, Noah's other sons, they covered Noah's shame. Without needing to witness it, without needing to partake in it, they covered it and they hid it. And this is why it's so important to understand the honor-shame dynamic in Scripture. This is just one of a handful of stories where when we try to discern, when we try to dissect, when we try to rip apart a part of Scripture, we end up falling into the very trap that Scripture is warning us about. If we go into the Bible with a guilt and innocence mindset, we will try to find the guilt in every story. We will attempt to witness their shame just so we can know what was so bad. When we do so, especially when we then share that shame, we become guilty of the same thing that Ham was cursed for.